You may have noticed a large, distinctively marked yellow and black orb-weaving spider in your pollinator garden or yard. In much of North America, this will be the yellow garden spider, or Gyope orontia, also known as the riding spider, zigzag spider, and the zipper spider, for reasons we will get to in a minute. The female yellow garden spider is super recognizable. They are large spiders, half an inch to a little over an inch in size, not including their legs, which can more than double their overall length, with distinct bright yellow and black markings on the body. Despite their size, they are not aggressive towards people and are totally harmless. If provoked, they will often drop from their webs and attempt to hide. Or she may start flexing her legs rhythmically to cause the web to pulsate, something called web flexing. The males are much smaller, about a quarter of the size of the female, skinnier, and lack the vivid markings of the females. They are easily overlooked because of their smaller size and the lack of the flashy markings. Fun fact, yellow garden spiders, like many arachnids, will fluoresce under UV light, which is awesome. If you love big awesome spiders, and who doesn't, be sure to spin a web around that like button. Another key in identifying the female yellow garden spider is their web. The females build large, circular webs that have a central zigzag or zipper pattern, the source of many of this species' common names. The zigzag pattern on a mature female's web will be linear in shape, while the pattern on an immature female's web will be larger and more oval. The zigzag area is called a stabulum and tatum, and although there are several hypotheses, no one is exactly sure why the spider builds it. Just one of those mysteries of nature we have yet to unravel. Female yellow garden spiders usually build their webs in tall grass or vegetation where it is semi-protected from the wind, but still open enough to catch prey. However, they will also sometimes build their webs along the sides of houses or in front of windows. If the web is catching plenty of prey and isn't getting torn down often, she will maintain the web in the same location for the entire season. You can find their webs anytime from spring until the first frost, but I think they are the easiest to find in late summer and early fall as some of the vegetation starts to die back. Male yellow garden spiders build much smaller webs next to or within the outer edges of a female's web. The male will gently pluck the strands of a female's web to invite her to mate. Of course, if she's not in the mood, the male will become dinner. And even if successful, the male will spontaneously die during mating and become locked into the female's, well, female parts. Which is just weird but it is a surefire method to ensure that another male does not mate with that female. After mating, the female yellow garden spider may make up to four large brown egg sacs that she will hang on the web. In more temperate locations, the eggs will often hatch in the fall, but the young will stay in the egg sac until spring when they emerge as super cute little spiderlings. One of the coolest things about the yellow garden spider is that they are often found close to houses, in pollinator gardens, and in our yards, where they can easily be observed. I have always enjoyed watching these big flashy spiders ever since I was a young child. If you know a grade school age child who loves creepy crawlies, there is an excellent book on the yellow garden spider that they will love. And so will a lot of adults. I'll be sure to put a link for that in the description. The list of what's on the menu for yellow garden spiders is quite diverse. Flies, Katydids, bees, beetles, grasshoppers, and even dragonflies can become lunch if they get caught in a yellow garden spider's web. These spiders are generally considered beneficial to have around because they eat such a wide variety of insects, many of which can become pests in the garden. Having them in your garden also suggests that you have a functioning mini ecosystem, the goal of any backyard ecologist. That includes both predators and prey. Another arachnid predator that is part of a functional backyard ecosystem that doesn't spin a web and instead runs down prey like an eight-legged mini tiger is the awesome wolf spider. You can learn all about them in this video and you may even see one if you get out and explore nature in your backyard. 